When someone fervently wants for a very long time to seem something, it will eventually be difficult for that person to be anything else. The profession of almost everyone, even of the artist, begins with hypocrisy, with an imitating from outside and a mimicking of what works effectively. One who always wears the mask of friendly expressions must eventually gain power over benevolent moods, without which the expression of friendliness cannot be affected. And finally, these moods gain power over him, and he is benevolent. There are expectations for some occupations、um, that work on published pay scales, such as the National Health Service staff、um, and al- also new entrants, currently defined as non EU workers under the age of 26 on the date of their visa application, or a pe- person of a nationality switching from a study visa to a work visa. So, changes to the skill and salary threshold follow the max recommendations to lower the skill thresholds. From graduate level jobs to those requiring A level or an equivalent education. And the lowering of the salary threshold from, from £30,000 that currently applies to non EU citizens applying for long term work visas. EU citizens coming to the UK to join British citizens or settled people will need to meet the same requirements. Um, as applied to the non EU citizens, including a minimum 18,600 minimum income requirement. So, there have definitely been some changes now for EU citizens going forward for living and working in the UK. It is a genocidal doctrine. That is its intention. Now, that's not under my definition of genocide, that's under the definition of genocide as put forward by the United Nations Genocide Convention. Of、uh, 1948, Article 2 in particular. And th- that, that genocidal intent runs through Islamic doctrine like the lettering running through a stick of rock. And it's achieved in two ways firstly, through population expansion, secondly, through war and subjugation. A thousand years ago, there was an Anglo Saxon country in England. A kingdom. The people were from Germany and southern Scandinavia and parts of Holland. They made up the population of this country along with the Celts who had been here before the Romans and had their origins in what is now Belgium and France. Then, too, there were the descendants of the Vikings who came from Scandinavia. In other words, a thousand years ago, this country was 100% Western European. In 1066, the Normans arrived and took over the running of England. These were the descendants of Scandinavian Vikings who had settled in France, the Northmen, corrupted to North- Normans. Still Western European, you see. They were only a tiny elite, no more than 2% of the population in the years following the Norman invasion were actually Norman. They amounted, therefore, to about one in 50 of the population. So the general population remained ethnically Anglo Saxon. If you have any immigration problem whatsoever, I've done it. And we see that throughout in many areas in towns and cities across the country. Small numbers of foreign sailors, gypsies, and so on entered the country over the next five or six hundred years. There were certainly a handful of Africans, including, of course, that wretched John Blank, the famous trumpeter, and a few Indians, or the odd Chinese person, and so on. But these only amounted to a few hundred here and there. Prime Minister called for a stronger national identity, what he called muscular liberal defence of British values to prevent people turning to extremism. He said it was important to differentiate Islam and Islamist extremism. But his words angered many Muslim groups.、Uh, make war against non Muslims until religion will be for Allah alone, until worship is for Allah alone. I've been commanded to fight people till they say none has the right to be worshipped. But Allah. That is the repeat function. Keep making war against non Muslims until the whole world becomes a one religion state. The next wave of immigration was the French Protestants who were being persecuted in France 
and they were given refuge in Britain in the 17th and 18th centuries. These were the Huguenots. Something like 40 or 50,000 of them arrived in this country in total in the late 17th and early 18th century. These people, who were also from Western Europe, made up therefore one in a hundred of the overall population in 1700. Now, one other thing I want to um, cover before wrapping up is um, the new situation with Hong Kong. The UK has not forgotten its colonial past with Hong Kong. Due to the civil unrest that has taken place in Hong Kong and due to the personal freedoms being affected, the UK has offered all British national overseas passport holders and their dependents a route to citizenship in the UK. All BNO passport holders will be given the right to remain in the UK, including the right to work and study for five years. After five years, they'll be able to apply for settled status and then gain citizenship. There will also be a um, £43 million support package to help new Hong Kong citizens arriving in the UK to settle. And this will aid people accessing housing, work, and educational support, along with providing practical advice and assistance in applying for school placements, registering with GPs, and even setting up businesses. So of course, there are costs that come with applying uh, for these specific um, statuses. But what is quite important is that the UK is extending this to people who are obviously based in Hong Kong and hold this specific type of citizenship. So I hope that just gave you um, a quick understanding of the UK migration policies um, over time and what the current situation is. So still 99% um, Anglo-Saxon and 100% Western Europe. We come now to the late 19th century and so far for 800 years almost all the immigrants have been European. There were a few thousand Laskas who were sailors from South India, mainly Siletis uh, from what is now Bangladesh during the 19th century, but these people were mainly confined to Docklands and it was a changing population. They didn't live as a permanent community. Firstly, through, through violence, and uh, that, violent, uh, that includes things like killing non-Muslims wherever you find them, as the Quran repeats 14 times. Uh, the, se the second way is imposing physically destructive living conditions and mental and physical harm, as defined in the UN Genocide Convention. And this is seen in the activities, most vividly, in the activities of the Muslim rape gangs, who say that uh, uh, that or that is justified in the Quran. It's sanctioned by the Quran 14 times. 14 times the Quran refers to those whom your right hands possess. That, that means war captives, war booties, war booty, sex slaves taken in war. They, but become Muslim, that's the best way because the beauty of Islam is you get the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Last Testament. I mean, that really is, for me, even the Jews acknowledge this because Islam in many ways is a universalized Judaism. It's Judaism for the Gentiles. Very often Christians marvel at how Jews miss Jesus. Uh, Muslims also marvel at how Christians and Jews miss Muhammad. Although, to be fair to the Jews, they do acknowledge the prophet uh, as a providential force. And, and they do acknowledge him as a, a Noahidic messenger preparing the way for the the coming of the Messiah. And certainly the great um, father of Orientalism, uh, Ignaz Golzeher, he actually said that he felt that Islam was the only religion that somebody of a philosophical bent could actually accept. The breakup of the United Kingdom. But I wanted to tell the boxers that the only chance to defeat the referee who are against you or against the country is to win by knockout. This is the only thing. I honestly can't see what ethnicity has to do with this. And I'm getting a little ticked off with people coming to live in Britain and not being the slightest bit grateful or even showing any desire to fit in with our way of life. If you 
like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell.